Okay, so to kind of continue from my last video, I was working with uh, how to do a basic insert or just how to insert some data into a database here. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to get that information. Um, so we already kind of for brevity, I'm just, that's the reason I'm starting from my last video. Let's just assume already that we have a connection string to our database. Uh, I've already built a connection object and I've already built a command object. Um, we've initialized some of their basic components in the constructor. And then we've built a method called execute, uh, which passes a name value to it and then uh, essentially inserts a name into it. Uh, so, or into our table here, and our table just has a table called person and a column called name. Uh, it also has a column called ID, which is an identity, uh, but that's not necessary. We don't insert uh, uh, any values into that or we don't delete any values from that either so um, to kind of read from a table there's a couple different ways and in this one we're going to use an SQL data reader and uh, there's a couple advantages and disadvantages and I'll talk about them as we go here so um, provided that you've already included your uh, system uh, SQL client your SQL client namespace here uh, we're going to continue on so I'm going to make a method called uh, uh, read public void. I'm going to say uh, read data values, and this is going to be our uh, this is going to be our reading. So uh, like we did last time, we need to set the command text. So we're going to say command text uh, dot command text equals, and we're going to say select name from person because uh, we're selecting the name column from the table person so select name from person and then we're going to do again using connection for security and brevity is er, reasons allows to write it will automatically dispose and close this connection and uh, then we don't have to worry about the garbage collector later maybe not picking it up and somebody exploiting that so uh, awesome. So then I'm going to actually move that that way so you guys can see everything. Uh, so then I'm going to go to connection. I'm going to say open. And then I'm going to say command dot execute uh, non-query. Uh, or sorry, then I'm... Uh, that's what I normally would do. And actually, I almost forgot. We have to create a SQL data reader up here. So I'm going to say public SQL data reader. And I'm just going to call it a reader. And a uh, cool thing here is you don't need to necessarily uh, declare this or initialize this. We're going to do it down here. So in our read data values method, we're going to say reader is equal to command dot execute execute reader. And you can see here that it returns a SQL data reader, which is what this object is. <clears throat> and one of the overloaded methods here is to control the way that uh, what happens after this reader has been executed. And there's a couple different things that this does. You could close the connection. You could keep it open um, in case you need to do a couple other things. Um, I can go through the list here. So you have your default, which will just close the connection afterwards. Close the connection, which will just close the connection um, turns the column and primary key and for identity information uh, in this case we don't really care about this the schemas so you can uh, actually I honestly don't play around with these too much pract uh, practically so I'd be interested to read any comments from anybody that does and what they typically use them for so uh, in any case so now we have this reader so one of the advantages is we can now read this information and very easily too and hopefully we know what kind of information is coming back so in this query here we know exactly that that's just going to return the name column uh, the downside is this connection has to be open so uh, we have to do it in our using connection here um, that is the downside you can't close the you can't uh, close the connection because it needs to be able to read the table row by row essentially um, so that's kind of a security risk for a lot of people. So that's one di disadvantage to this, but it's pretty fast too. So let's uh, show you how that works. I'm going to say reader.read. And what essentially that's saying is as long as there's a record to read or a row to read, I'm going to continue in this loop. Um, and then we're just, let's uh, print it out here. 
and we know that it's uh, a name column, so I'm going to say name is equal to, and in the select statement, it's returning a temporary table that just has a column called name, and the index of that would be zero. Um, so you would say reader dot get string. Uh, you could say get value, and that would be fine too. Get value or get string, either one will work. And we know that again, this is at this is at index zero. Now this isn't very robust. You might be thinking, like I'm not. How am I always going to know what's being returned? And that's another downside to the reader. Um, it's not incredibly flexible unless you use some reflections to kind of go through that. But don't worry, we'll maybe worry about that later. So, um, so for right now, we're just going to be printing out these values. And last time we only inserted a couple. So, um, let's go ahead and run this really quick. I'm going to go to our program and I'm going to uh, close this out or comment that out. I'm going to say d dot read data values. And one thing that might happen is we might get an error, but we'll see here. So I'm going to hit Control shift b to build my project. And it might take a minute here. There we go. And then I'm going to start without debugging Control f 5 here. And pretty sweet, right? So it took a little second there because I had to close and dispose of the connection. That's a little bit slow. Um, but we can see that it successfully read the names from the database. So there's not much else to it in that sense. And uh, later on, we'll get a little bit about parsing XML documentation or documents and uh, how that's a little bit more robust and maybe even loading some things into some data sets or some tables. So, all right, that concludes this video.